If we could create the genes of a proto-dinosaur, could we ever build one as they did in Jurassic Park? It sounds easy. You begin with the DNA of an emu, slightly tweak its genes to give it new traits, implant the DNA in an emu egg, and presto, you have an animal. But, as you guessed, it's not that simple. First, we would have to make our dinosaur DNA. Luckily, we already have machines that do it. These synthesizers string together the primary units of DNA called base pairs. At the moment, machines can only make DNA strands that are 600,000 base pairs long, while a bird's DNA contains 1.8 billion base pairs. But gene synthesizers are developing fast, and you may not have to recreate all of the DNA. You may just have to replace small selected parts. We already have small artificial chromosomes that have been put into uh, embryos and develop and divide and express their genes. The technology is advancing so fast in terms of being able to not only sequence genes, but also the ability to put those genes back together and manufacture long stretches of DNA. I think the technology is there to do it. If we succeed in making dinosaur DNA, could we make an animal from it? Amazingly, this technology may exist in a cloning lab. Mark Westhusen knows as much about creating life from DNA as anyone in the world. He and his colleague Dewey Kramer at Texas A&M University have cloned more species than researchers at any other laboratory. He loves these apples. They've cloned white-tailed deer, a black Angus bull, See, just a big baby. <laughs> and this cat, which now has kittens of her own. To make an emuosaurus, we would have to begin with an egg from an emu, just as Wes Husen uses an egg from a cow. His team begins by placing the egg under a dissecting microscope and prepping a suction pipette. First, we'd have to remove the existing DNA. So what we're going to do now is just pull out the DNA from the egg, enucleate it. Next, we'd have to insert the artificial DNA into the emu egg. And so what we have here is a cell that in this case represents a bovine cell. The challenge is to, to inject that cell into the, this space here. After that, we'd have a process where we'd actually fuse those two cells together so that we tra effectively transfer the chromosomes inside the cytoplasm of this egg. And then that egg will basically treat it um, as if it treats a sperm. We'd have to find just the right mix of chemicals to kickstart the fertilization process. And last, we'd implant the fertilized egg into an emu and hope that it will develop and hatch. But even this is not as easy as it sounds. In just the last 10 years, we've discovered that we need more than DNA to create a living embryo. The egg also contributes vital molecules that latch on to DNA and initiate the complex timing of when genes begin to turn on and off. No one knows if a modern emu egg would provide just the right chemical mix for the genes in ancient DNA to spring to life. Clearly, making a dinosaur from scratch is a huge undertaking. But that doesn't mean it's impossible. If we could come up with viable DNA, which is, again, one of the critical parts to the whole, I think, equation, then I think it's, it's reasonable to assume that we, uh, we could get the system to work. All the evidence so far suggests that it, it probably can be done. Our scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Today, no scientist is trying to create a theme park animal as they did in Jurassic Park. They want to understand how evolution works. 
Experiments like theirs are giving us more insight into the genetic history of modern animals, and even ourselves. But with enough time and money, could someone ever create a dino-like creature from a bird? Sean Carroll sees many obstacles along the way. We could imagine taking some sort of stab about how to change this trait or that trait. It would be a lot of trial and error. It's an unimaginable number of steps. So I, I wouldn't pretend to, to imagine how long it would take us to, to make any sort of progress in that direction. But Jack Horner believes that in less than 50 years, it will be possible. I have no doubt that, that it could happen. I think the chances of recreating uh, a bird with a lot of dinosaur characteristics is very high. Hans Larsen goes further. He believes that in a hundred years or so, it would be possible to retro-engineer animals that look just like the ancient dinosaurs. One could take everything we know about development, all the genetics, all the non-genetics parts of it, and we could probably create any kind of anatomy that we see out there. Why can't we take all that information, just change around a little bit, and produce a T-Rex? or something that looks just like a T-Rex. I think that kind of a, of a scenario is quite possible. Maybe sooner than we think. Have we seen the last of Jurassic Park? Maybe not. You know, I have to admit that I've, I've certainly imagined walking up on a stage to give a talk and having a little little dino chicken or whatever you want to call him walk up behind me, that would be kind of cool.